So at ASCO this year, uh, we had a plenary session devoted to kidney cancer, and in particular on a study out of France that looked at the role for cytoreductive nephrectomy followed by sunitinib versus sunitinib alone in metastatic renal cell carcinoma. The results of a phase three study, a non-inferiority study called the Carmina study. Uh, Walt, do you want to summarize this study for us and then maybe we can have a little bit of a discussion of the clinical implications of these results? So this, I think, was a critically important uh, study that followed up on really observations from almost three decades ago in which a nephrectomy with interferon uh, had a survival advantage over interferon by itself, and that study has led to now three decades worth of discussions of whether what the role of nephrectomy in the context of metastatic disease. And really, it's very gratifying to finally see another randomized study that is rigorously addressing this particular issue in the context of modern therapies. And so in this study, as you know, patients with good performance status of zero and one, but intermediate or poor risk disease were randomized to uh, either an upfront nephrectomy followed by sunitinib or sunitinib by itself. And it was designed as a non-inferiority study in the sense that it would be considered, quote, non-inferior if the hazard ratio was no greater than 1.2. And in this uh, small study, the non-inferiority margin was not met. In other words, um, it did look like, um, surprisingly, the patients who uh, received the sunitinib without nephrectomy did better. Interesting. Tony, what's your take on this study? I think there is a lot to be done. I, you know, I, I want to congratulate my French colleagues for finishing a study we couldn't do in the United States. Some, many felt there is no equipoise, period, and here we go with the Carmina studies. I, I do think patient selection, Bob was saying that, is key. It remains key for Carmina. I think a patient with intermediate risk, great performance status, young, can go quickly through surgery and have a limited disease burden outside the kidney, should be considered strongly for an upfront cytoreductive nephrectomy. And we shouldn't take that, you know, um, option away. And the other question I would add then that currently we're seeing combinations, nivo ipi, Walt was mentioning that, cabozentinib, Rich mentioned uh, that too, that are beating sunitinib frontline options and and we are seeing combination with checkpoint blockers and TKI against sunitinib. So the field where you consider, consider sunitinib as control is evolving and will other therapies, you know, modern frontline therapy be applicable to a Carmina-like uh, study? And I would say yes, probably yes. Rich, how will you apply this in your practice? That's a great question. So first of all, I'm very, uh, happy that this study was able to be done, as Tony mentioned. I don't think it, it's very hard to do these studies, especially when surgery is involved in randomizing patients. <coughs> the, the issue with me, um, the study for me, is that it's not exactly how I practice today. So for instance, I rarely will, if a patient presents with metastatic disease, give them, go to upfront nephrectomy. I almost always have a trial of some systemic therapy wait a period of time, whether it be three to six months, and then kind of pick the patients who, who are doing well and maybe um, you, you, who you think can uh, withstand an nephrectomy. <laughs> so in this study, there were a lot of poor risk patients that I probably, you know, we wouldn't have sent straight to surgery. We probably would have tried to um, get them to, with a better performance status. I, I know they were all zero and ones, but maybe we would have probably try to debulk them uh, to, some de to some degree. And you know, there was 40 patients on the, on the arm that, that went to surgery that didn't ever made it to Sutent. So that leads me to believe, you know, were these sicker patients than we're typically dealing with that we might not have sent to surgery? So I think the question for me still remains, you know, do, what is the role of nephrectomy in the modern era? I think we need to address this question. If I were to design the study, I would probably think more or less more about giving the upfront systemic therapy and then randomizing from there and trying to pick patients who are, um, you know, still good candidates at that at that time. But I think, I mean, I think Richard and, and, and Tony, the burden of proof now falls upon the physician who wants to do nephrectomy first. We have a randomized phase three, apparently well done trial where patients who got nephrectomy upfront didn't do as well. And so if you're gonna offer that to your patients, um, you're going to have to defend that 
as um, a appropriate option and why this trial does not apply to that patient. So I do think that we have to recognize that. I want to clarify something, Walt, because you said they don't do as well, but this was a non-inferiority study, and it was a one-sided non-inferiority study to really look to see if sunitinib alone was uh, non-inferior to nephrectomy followed by sunitinib. Can we really say that sunitinib is superior to nephrectomy no, followed by sunitinib? You know, cor I mean, I think you're correct. You're correct that it's not superior, but now, in essence, you would be offering another intervention that has toxicities, that has side effects, that you have not proven is better, and you haven't even proven it's the same. So um, I think that the burden on any physician in providing any therapy, drug, radiation, surgery, when you can't even prove that it's the same as not doing it, you have a burden. So is the standard of care now for patients who present with metastatic renal cell carcinoma to do a biopsy to evaluate the tumor, assuming that we're going to start with systemic therapy? Or are those patients still going to go first to the surgeon and get a nephrectomy and then come to the medical oncologist afterwards? Does this change our referral pattern, our whole practice pattern for upfront metastatic kidney cancer? You know, I think if you need to or you think you may think of a systemic therapy first, you have to do a biopsy. And that has been, you know, historically a challenge because many times we ask for a biopsy. It's a fine needle aspiration that, you know, puts us at a problem where patient could have renal cell. There is no information, of course, about the grade, sarcomatoid differentiation, even histologic subtype. So at least we have to go to a biopsy. It has to be large needle cold biopsy. And we have to talk, you know, to the interventional radiologist and the pathologist you know, after that to, to see what we can get as much information as possible. I think it will be hard for some centers, some pathologists to say, you know, to give us more information about the histologic subtype, for example, which could, you know, have implications. Well, I, I think that that's critical because everything that we've spoken about up until now really applies to conventional or clear cell carcinoma of its various, you know, grades and differentiation. Uh, we really do not have level one data for any of the half dozen or more non-clear cell carcinomas. And I would add, if you let me then, that since systemic therapies with non-clear cell RCC, irrespective, you know, uh, do a bit worse, at least data from the VEGF TKI, then clear cell counterpart, you may want to do, especially for patients with limited disease burden outside kidney, you may want to go with surgery first, see what you're dealing with, and use systemic therapy after. But I, and I think that what also this, this data <coughs> points out that makes it even more important than ever, and I'm sure all our institutions are doing this, is multidisciplinary care. I think it's very important now if a patient presents with metastatic disease to really have a, a well-informed decision from the urologist, the medical oncologist, whoever else is involved, so that they can make a really informed decision. And you would biopsy the metastatic site, not the kidney itself, because the kidney itself is going to be very misleading do the sampling error? Uh, ideally, ideally, you know. I mean, there may be ones that are risky to biopsy right. or they may be very small to sample, but I think your point's well taken. Whenever we can, it's really the metastatic disease that we want to be able to right. profile right. and characterize. So these are great points. I think, you know, if we can just summarize, do we all see Carmina as a practice-changing study, both in terms of how we work up metastatic disease, both in terms of how we manage <laughs> this as now a multidisciplinary effort, and maybe in terms of how we now sequence, maybe not one size fits all for this population. Uh, I think so. I mean, I think I've argued personally for um, many years that patients with uh, metastatic disease absolutely need to see the medical oncologist before they go to the operating room, and I think that this is now level one data that my prior personal opinion is justified. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think for me, it doesn't change my practice because I, my practice is already different with treating up front, but, but it does really change the, th the way I think about a patient after they've responded. Now I'm questioning what is the role of cytoreductive and nephrectomy, which the Carmina question did not answer that, but now I'm still kind of questioning what that is. We had a patient last week had uh, uh, up front ipinevo. We decided to take him to cytoreductive, had a great response took it out, everything was dead. And so I'm, I'm kind of questioning 
what, what, what did that do for that patient? Did I take away a kidney that, you know, and so I, I don't know. I think there's, this raises a lot of more hypothesis. Uh, it answers some questions, but leaves a lot to be asked. So Tony, last word, is, is, is there equipoise now in the low volume metastatic patients to consider a trial to look at that question of whether or not to preoperative or, 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 or neoadjuvant systemic therapy versus upfront nephrectomy in that otherwise kind of low intermediate risk population? I think there is equipoise. I think whenever you can put the patient in NED or, you know, in deep responses using, using a combination of cytoreductive nephrectomy and systemic therapy, you should. And I think this trial should be done. And if we can do it in the U.S., we may go to Europe.